the next world of saltwater fishing, we're going west of Key West in the Florida Keys. We're headed to Rebecca Shoal to cash in on the mutton snapper bite on the rock piles. Good job, <laughs> nice job. Looks like a mutton, mutton snapper. And then we're gonna take it nice. offshore. Oh! I, oh to the deeper it? reefs and live chum big oh, yellowtail that's, snapper to the surface. That's the biggest one yet, on the Rapala. And catch them on top water plugs. This is one episode you do not want to miss. George Buffer on this world of saltwater fishing. Big fish don't stand a chance. Key West and the Florida Keys, the end of the island chain down here. There's just so many opportunities, it's just sometimes difficult to pick one species of fish to go after. And this trip wouldn't be any exception. I had the Mark VI down here to fish with Captain Brad Nowicki. He was born and raised here, has an extensive background in all types of fishing. He knows the waters extremely well. I'm um, just loving fishing. That's all I wanted to do growing up is fish. Uh, anything on the water, so anything I could do to get on the water, that's all I wanted to do. And then as soon as I figured out there's charter fishermen, that was perfect. And one of his specialties, at least in my eyes, is that he makes those long journeys out to the west of Key West. I tend to run a little further, get away from people, <laughs> um, down Marquesas area, a little farther Cosgrove, Rebecca, and even to the Tortugas. Brad met me at the Mark 6, got all the tackle ready, iced the boat down, and we took off. The weather window that we were experiencing over our two-day journey down here was totally magnificent because the strongest winds we had were like two miles an hour. You could not pick better weather conditions to do what we wanted to do, and that was make a 45 to 50 mile run towards the west brought the boat up to around 45, 48 miles an hour. We're gonna get down there in rapid fashion and get on those rocks and start catching snappers. Almost had that little flare of a mutton to it, doesn't it? It's running like it. What are you doing now? I'm gonna show you yellowtail snapper while you're fighting that one. <laughs> <laughs> little mixed bag action. And the bottom down here is really radical and you're watching the Simrad machine, you look at the bottom and all of a sudden you'll see what appears like fuzz coming across the bottom readings. That's indicating that those are sea fans, more that mutton style of bottom. But you gotta love it when you come down this part and dealing with rocks and everything. You got some good strong runs out of him, didn't you? Oh, he's fighting good. Okay, I'm gonna hold off and watch you. <laughs> I'm thinking of all the actions on this side. Feeling good, he's coming up. We got him away from the rocks. That's a good thing. I'm, I'm, a, I'm thinking pause, I'm thinking much. This way he had those runs. The beauty. <laughs> good job. <laughs> nice job. Pretty. Yes it is. One of serious. my favorite ones. <laughs> and the shallow. Water, white tackle. Yeah. See how they, uh, like the one we caught earlier was more red? Yeah. Because he was in the deep water, they yep. get more red and they turn a little more uh, sure. greenish in the shallow water. And why is that? Because it mixes with grasses the, and sand? The grass and the sand yeah. they're on. And I, I don't know if it's what they're eating out there, the shrimp out there. Uh huh. But uh, they're always a little light color in here. Usually you can tell the difference. And you know when there's one down there, there's gotta be there's more. a lot more. Excellent job. You got that on just a jig head and a Jig head uh, and a bonita? chunk of bonita. Perfect. Well, there you have it. That's Dinner time fish. perfect. Sure enough, the local pro, Brad, he bent the rod first. He had our mutton snapper in the boat and there it was. Um, the rock piles were showing some decent promise of producing mutton snappers, which happened to be one of the goals on this trip. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing, proudly brought to you by Mako. You'll find them where the fish are. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Mercury Marine, go boldly. 
Simrad and the new NSS Evo 3 display. Go with Simrad and go with confidence. We'll be right back. It's hard to miss when you're fishing on the rock piles around Rebecca Shoal, some 40 miles west of Key West in the Florida Keys. Brad and Wiki and I are chasing after Mutton Snapper. I'm just digging he, deep. He's digging hard. Wonder if we got a grouper. Either that is a big yellow pill. Usually when we get one mutton bite, there's a good chance the next bite's gonna be a mutton bite. Get a good uh, idea that it's mutton because they run all over the place. They don't tend to rock up most of the time, they just run across the reefs. So you still want to get them up fast. Here it comes. Something coming down Looks there. Looks like a mutton. mutton snapper. Hey, hey, hey. There you go. I think I got you though. <laughs> I'm just happy to have one. I don't care if it's bigger or not. This is. That's a good one. Love that blue stripe yeah, on him. Love it. Love it. Well, you knew there was more down there. There's no way that there He's could hungry. be. He's hungry. Swallow that thing. Mm, dude. Once one rock pile sort of thins out a bit, or if we get chased away by predator fish, case in point, Brad hooks up, line's leaving uh, the spool, and it's running. So you're hoping it's a mutton snapper. So he was working his fish, and, and, and you could tell by the way it's fighting, it's getting more maybe barracuda-ish. Big barracuda, George. Barracuda? Yeah. It was a monster of a barracuda. I don't know, 25 pounds, maybe pushing 30 pounds. Jeez. <laughs> you could just see it was gorging on these smaller yellow tails or whatever else that was getting excited and coming around the Mark VI. A big predator fish doing what it does uh, extremely well. But I'll check his stomach out. Look how bloated that is <laughs> from eating, eating yellowtail, yellowtail snappers. Now. And they have an awful scent, don't they? Yeah. It's hard to get off. They're strong. Okay. Strong smell. Ready? Yeah. Damn. You can see why they hang around here. It's just like a 24 hour restaurant. Yep. Never shuts down. Right, I'm getting it too. Here we go. Let me double up here. The good thing about the muttons compared to groupers is that for the most part, with these muttons, when they start running, you can let them run a bit. Keep the heat, but you don't have to really pressure them as hard as a grouper because they're not likely to get down in these rocks. Um, you can probably enjoy the file a little bit more too. I feel him down here. He's on it too. I just gotta get him out of it somehow. Get him turned? I'm thinking. Well, the rock pile fishing for the muttons uh, down around Rebecca Shoal uh, really panned out. We, we had some good light tackle fishing out here, but it shows you the versatility of these rock piles in that you could actually come out of here, run west to Key West in August, which is traditionally like the doldrums when it comes to uh, you know mutton fishing, and get in the rock piles, specifically target mutton snapper, and come away a winner. Nice, the guy we were looking for right there. In your capable hands. Feets don't fill me now. That's a beauty. That's what we're looking for. Well, you call it a uh, mutton rock. You got mutton me on rock. your spot there. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Worked out perfect. Yeah. Get the hook back. Perfect and in the corner. That is so awesome. No sharks. <laughs> no, you know, I saw you with your shark before, and I'm thinking to myself, well, oh, come on, don't be one of those. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, those little sharks bite just like them at the beginning. Yeah. Beautiful. Nice. Very nice. Hitting these rock piles, I was a little bit surprised that we didn't see uh, a lot of red grouper. Normally red grouper are the mainstay out here. And of course, uh, Brad, he, he breaks the ice on that. I see his rod bend and it's going straight up and down, very grouper-like. And he's putting heat into the fish and sure enough, here comes a beauty of a red grouper. I don't think he's hooked too well. Oh, he's not so hooked that well. Well enough. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Did well then. Just on that, that jig combination. And With the, a and pilchard. Like pilchard. Yep. And all these uh, these groupers, the red muttons, and on these shallower rock piles, they just all mix up. They mix all in together. There's uh, We get the gags even in here um, and the blacks. But uh, the reds are the most dominant ones. 
coming through. Very nice. Did good job on that. Yeah, let's good. get him over here. Got him? Yep. He's out for you. Oh, he was hooked well. Than you <laughs> he was hooked well. We got our fill of bottom fishing in. I wanted to show George how good the yellowtail fishing's been. So we headed out to one of the deeper reefs there and uh, 80, 90 feet of water. Uh, Brad had said that the yellowtail has been very, very solid as of late. And he said a lot of big fish have been around, these two, three pounders. So we ran to a spot roughly around 90 feet of water. And as soon as we got on the numbers, put the sim red machine, we, we dialed it in. And we come over a shoal, a yellowtail snapper that was un freaking believable. George Pulveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing, proudly brought to you by Penn. Let the battle begin. Rapala, your best shot at a world record. Float On, the original aluminum immersible boat trailer. ACR, the leader in marine safety electronics. We'll be right back. In Key West, a new tourist attraction is the brand new Papa's Pilar Distillery. This attraction allows visitors to come in and just take a well-guided tour to see how the distillery process works. They talk about the types of rum barrels and the flavorings that they get to create Papa's Pilar. And after the tour is done, they have a wonderful tasting bar right by their gift shop. And who better tell you about Papa's Pilar than Carlton Grooms? My name is Carlton Grooms. I'm the Director of Operations and the rum maker for the Hemingway Rum Company here in Key West, Florida, makers of Papa's Pilar. When visitors of Key West come to our facility, the first thing they experience is authenticity. It's an authentic building. It's been here since 1878, built by Irish bricklayers. They get an authentic experience of a distillery. They get to surround and walk around the distillers while we're actually distilling. They get to smell the smells. They get to see us working front and center. And then, of course, they get to see the bottling, and they get to see a lot of really great attractions to learn a little bit more about Hemingway and his life here on this great island. With part one of the trip accomplished, and that was catching these muttons on the, the rock piles and the shallow bottom structures around Rebecca Shoals, we had the live wells packed up with pilchard still, especially the chummers. The live chumman is real popular here in Key West. If you have the bait, um, you're gonna catch fish. Always big when they try to go down to the bottom. Oh yeah. Coming up for me. Ooh. Oh, you got that big. Whoa, you need an adder, you can have this. Let him. That's a ball, that's a hoss. That's He's out of Bonanza. We got the yellowtail popping on the surface. When you're using live bait, you can cast right into them. You hit the water, you're hooked up. An awesome fish. Great fish, especially when they hit that two pound, three pound range. That's what you want to catch. Big fly gill tail. Unreal. I like how they get that pink on their belly. Yes. When you get that big. And then I guess the light advantage when you're chumming too is that these fish, normally, you know, you're trying to scale down with leaders to get the bite. I guess they get so crazy they and lose their mind. crazy. You can use a heavier leader with them. They'll just eat about anything. After catching a few big yellowtail on light pilchards, that was a no-brainer. I wanted more of a challenge. So I grabbed an outfit that I had rigged and ready to go. It was a small spinner 4500 series. I had a 40-pound fluorocarbon leader, and at the end of it, I had the new X-Wrap Twitchin' Minnow. And the times where that lure landed right with the pilchards that were getting exploded on, and I would give it a twitch. And as soon as you made that twitch, those yellowtail were on it. Oh! I, oh, you got him? Got him. Black tip's coming in. Black tip shark? Yep. Too bad, I got him. Got him. <laughs> on the artificial. Once I got the first one up, I was really excited. I said, got my yellowtail snapper on an artificial. This is awesome. Look at <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's the biggest one yet. And real. <laughs> On the Rapala. I think those fish are back there all the time. When they're uh, busting live baits, they'll eat just about anything. 
They don't even care about leader size or anything. They just are eaten. Those big fish tend to group up in their own little school and uh, chase any of that live bait around. Check this guy out. And look at the size of this. The lure. Just jumping yeah. on a top water lure. That is The awesome. Twitching Minnow 12. Awesome. That's wrapped. That's the best way to catch them. George's Tackle Locker, brought to you by King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. True sports anglers are conservationists who believe we must strive to maintain sustainable populations of our game fish for future generations. Sure, we'll take what we want for a few fresh meals, but we practice catch and release, especially with fish that are worth way more alive than in a fish box. Thanks to the pioneering efforts of King Sailfish mounts, it is no longer necessary to kill a fish to have it mounted. Modern mounts are now fiberglass replicas, and those produced by King Sailfish are ultra high quality and detailed, right down to special touches, such as downturned eyes, and any special blemishes, marks, or tears your prize fish may have had before it was set free. All that's necessary is a measurement of the fish. And if some photos were taken, send them in. King Sailfish will duplicate its exact coloration and any unique features. So when you want a mount of your next trophy fish, set it free to fight again and let King Sailfish take it from there. Mercury Performance Stats Key West. Seas Calm. Power, triple 350 horsepower Mercury Verado outboards. Total miles traveled, 110. Speed, 48 miles per hour. Total fuel burned, 98 gallons. We'll be right back. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing, proudly brought to you by Starbright, professional grade boat care products, Papa's Pilar Artesian Crafted Rum, Never a Spectator, The Florida Keys and Key West, Come As You Are, King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. With Key West, there's certainly no shortages of places to stay. And we were on Stock Island at a relatively brand new property that had opened up. It's the Perry Hotel and Marina. And once I pulled in here and took a look at the premises, it was pretty awe-inspiring. But just a beautiful piece of property. And who better to tell you about it than Maggie Fromm, their marketing director. The Perry Hotel is an upscale boutique hotel property. And we are actually located on Stock Island, which is the first island right before Key West. We have 100 rooms. Um, every room has a private balcony. Um, we're doing all of this in a very upscale way. So we're located on Stock Island Marina, which has 220 slips. Um, and we have the best marina, in my opinion, in the country. We have all the provisions that you need, fuel here, uh, ship store. Um, we do have space for your trailer, and we also have free parking if you're staying at the hotel with us as well. Our incredible yellow tailing continues. I'm with Brad Nowicki, and we're anchored on a spot some 40 miles west of Key West in the Florida Keys. Come on, you gotta get him, you gotta get him. Oh, that's a beautiful tail. Beautiful tail tail. Oh, yeah. oh he's in the bag. Can we get that? <laughs> Hang on. Are you gonna get him? I've seen a bunch of different ways to land yellowtail, <laughs> but uh, when you actually double duty with a chum bag, that is a yellowtail. Beautiful. Well, I want to know if it's IPFA legal to use a chum bag to help land. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to uh, consult with them come Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the size of that tail, That's though. beautiful. Hang on, 12 pounds. Oh. Awesome fish. All right, the artificial madman's going back in the game. <laughs> that's a I'm the, that's a gorgeous tail. So we kept at it. The, the blitzes became shorter and fewer. And what was going on was that the, uh, the tide just slacked out and the bite went away. Getting later in the day, decided to head on home. Had a great day weather-wise. Pulled the anchor and cruised right on in. It said we've got a gorgeous day. We have a boat to wash when we get back and some fish to clean. Let's pull the hook. And in that calm sea, we just got on the throttles and uh, headed for the barn. Back at the Perry Hotel on the marina, I docked the Mark VI, and I'm a stickler for keeping my boat clean. So broke out the Starbright, just a perfect ending to a perfect day off of Key West. 
we were based in Stock Island, and Stock Island has a couple really sensational restaurants here. One is an institution, the Hogfish Grill. You could just walk out here, be comfortable, sit down, um, have a good seafood dinner. Our case in point, we were hosted one night for the TV shoot. We brought in bags of our yellowtail snapper. They brought out yellowtail snapper sashimi for an appetizer, which was sensational. Brought out some other appetizers. Then he prepared the snapper in three to four different ways. It was just a perfect ending to a wonderful trip down here in Key West. Again, the weather could not have been more picture perfect. Got to show George a good time, different fishing. We did our muttons in the shallow water, a few groupers, and moved out and did those big yellow tail. <laughs> Whatever you want to target off of Key West, it's out here. It's just that sometimes a year, it's better than others, but yet there is no downtime for fishing in Key West, only in the Keys. Stay in touch with George. Visit georgepoforomo.com. On Facebook, facebook.com forward slash george.poforomo. On Instagram, at georgepoforomo. YouTube, georgepoforomo.tv. And on mobile devices, Waypoint TV.